And today the topic of the presentation is the effective power of lenses. By the end of this presentation, the audience will be able to describe the effective power of lens with respect to distance from the eye, the back vertex distance, spectacle magnification and the relative spectacle magnification, and the correction of a fakia using spectacles and the optical problems encountered during this. So if we recall from the previous pr uh, presentation, uh, in case of ametropia, whether it is hypermetropia or myopia, the correction is applied using the spectacle lenses which will focus the image onto the retina. So today we will discuss that not only the power of the spectacle lens used matters but also the distance at which it is placed from the eye that is also very important because moving the correcting lens away or towards the eye it would alter the virgin's power of the lens as well and the effective power is said to be increased or decreased. So uh, we will see that when a, con a lens, whether it is convex or a concave lens, it is moved away from the eye, the image is displaced forwards. So uh, the virgin's power of the eye it also changes and the uh, focal focus of the lens no longer coincides with the far point of the eye. So as the correcting lens is moved, we will say that the effectivity of the convex lens is said to be increased, whereas the effectivity of the concave lens it is said to be decreased. If we look at this diagram, it is a case of hypermetropia which has been corrected by the use of a convex lens. Now if we move the lens away from the eye, we will see that the image has been displaced forward and the convergence power of the convex lens is said to be increased. Therefore at this distance, we will require a convex lens of lesser power in order for the uh, rays of light to focus onto the retina. And uh, similarly over here, this is a case of myopia which has been treated with the use of a concave spectacle lens. And moving the lens uh, away from the eye will displace the image forward as well. And the effectivity of the concave lens, it will said to be decreased as uh, at this position, a concave lens of higher power will be required in order to cause the divergence and the rays of light to focus on the retina again. Uh, and practically speaking, we will observe that uh, in aphatic patients, which is basically a high degree of refractive hypermetropia, while uh, reading, they will push their glasses downwards onto their nose because the convex lens, as it will move away from the eye, it will increase it, the uh, its effective power and it will provide for the reading correction as well. Similarly, in high myopes, uh, when their glasses they slide down their nose, they uh, have greater degree of problem with that because the effectivity of the concave lens it will be diminished and uh, it will cause the blurring of the vision. So how will we calculate the power of this lens at a distance uh, as it is displaced from the eye? So as discussed previously, the power of the lens, it is the uh, reciprocal of the focal length of that lens. And now the lens, it has been displaced to a distance d, so the power will be denoted as 1 over f1, which is the focal length at the original position, minus d, which is the distance the lens has to be moved. Now, uh, placing the value of the focal length as well, the final formula which we get is F2, which is the power of the lens at the new position, uh, equals to F1 over 1 minus D into F1. And the distance is calculated as the back vertex power of the lens at the original position minus the back vertex power of the lens at the new position. So, what is the back vertex distance? It is the distance between the back of the lens and the anterior surface of the cornea. And it must be given for all of the prescriptions above 5 diopters as the position of the lens in front of the eye will uh, affect the optical correction of ametropia in the high power lenses. So uh, here we have an example which will help us understand all this clearly. In this, in this scenario, we have an eye which has been corrected for distance vision by the use of a uh, lens of minus 10 diopter sphere uh, placed at a distance 12 millimeters away from the eye. And we have been asked to calculate the contact lens power. So the contact lens, as you know, for a contact lens, the back vertex distance will be zero as it is placed onto the anterior surface of the cornea. So the distance we have is 12 minus zero, which is 12 millimeters. And we always take that in meters, which is 0 0.012 meters. And uh, we already have the F1 uh, within the scenario, which is minus 10. Now placing all these values, uh, we can calculate the F2 which will be the power of the contact lens to be used which will come to be minus 8.93 diopters. Okay, so next we move on to the spectacle magnification. 
the optical correction of amyotropia is associated with the change in the retinal image size and uh, this is denoted by the spectacle magnification which is the ratio of the corrected image size with the uncorrected image size and clinically more important is the relative spectacle magnification which we use which is the ratio between the corrected amyotropic image size with the emetropic image size of the eye. So in order to understand the change in the retinal image sizes, we will discuss the NAPS rule which states that the, if the amyotropia is axial and the correcting lens is placed in front of the eye such that its principal focus, it coincides with the anterior focal point of the eye, the retinal image will be same as that of the amyotropic eye. So for axial amyotropia, if the lens is at the anterior focus of the eye, there will be no change in the retinal image sizes. However, in the uh, refractive amyotropia, the uncorrected image size will be the same as that of amyotropic eye. But when a corrected lens uh, is used, whether it is convex or concave, the retinal image size will be either magnified or minified depending upon the nature of the lens. So uh, here if we see in the diagram, this is uh, an example of axial amyotropia, hypermetropia as well as axial myopia. Uh, Therefore, in axial hypermetropia, what is happening? We have an eyeball of shorter axial length and in myopia, the length of the eyeball is greater. So, uh, the correcting lens, if it is placed at the anterior focus point of the eye, it will only displace the image such that it falls onto the retina and there will be no change in the image size from that of an amyotropic eye. So, the relative spectacle magnification will be 1. In contrast, if the lens is moved within uh, nearer to the eye, that is within the anterior focus, the image size will be magnified in the case of axial myopia. Therefore, the contact lenses in axial myopia have a magnifying effect. Moving on to the refractive amyotropia. In refractive amyotropia, the image size will differ and uh, for hypermetropia, which is corrected by the use of a convex lens, the image will be magnified and the ISM will be greater than 1. And in a refractive myopia, with the use of concave lens, as they have a diminishing effect, the ISM will be less than 1 and the retinal limit size will be less than that of the emetropic eye. Okay, uh, uh, moving on to the spectacle correction of aphakia. So what is aphakia? It is basically the absence of lens within the eye. And as you know, the refractive power of eye is majorly contributed by the anterior surface of the cornea and the lens within the eye. Now, if we have removed the lens from the eye, the refractive power of the eye will change, change. And similarly, the anterior focal length of the aphakic eye will be different. It will switch to 23.23 millimeters as compared to the normal value of 17.05 millimeters. So for aphakia, when a contact lens is used, the relative spectacle magnification is 1.1, which is very much nearer to that uh, to the image of the emetropic eye. However, when the lens is placed at the anterior focal length, the relative spectacle magnification is 1.36. So uh, it will be a magnified image. And uh, usually the spectacles, they are worn at a distance of 12 to 15 millimeter from the eye. So at this position for an aphakic eye, the convex lens, it will be uh, exerting a spectacle magnification of 1.33. Uh, that is uh, three times the, um, uh, one third of the image will be enlarged with the use of aphakic spectacles. So uh, what are the optical problems in correcting aphakia with spectacles? Uh, number one, we have the magnification. For one diopter of a convex lens used, there is a magnification of 3% which occurs. So, um, uh, as in aphakia, high power lenses are used up to 10 diopters, so the magnification of approximately 20% to 30% is occurring, uh, which is not to tolerated well by the patients. And there is altered depth per uh, perception, there is pain cushion distortion because the peripheral uh, of the lens it is exerting more power and uh, so the central image it, uh, so uh, when the peripheral uh, part of the lens it exerts a greater virgin's power it will result into pin cushion distortion the objects they will appear to be moving faster uh, and there will be difficulty with hand eye coordination the objects will appear to be displaced forward than their actual distance 
and there is roving lens photoma which we'll discuss later on there is loss of fusion of binocular vision in unilateral aphasia due to discrepancy one eye will be producing a magnified image and the other will be producing a normal image and this uh, discrepancy will lead to the loss of uh, fusion there will be enhanced performance in the visual acuity test as the magnification is occurring with that eye so uh, for example in Sne uh, snellen chart uh, if the aphasic patient with spectacles is having a visual acuity of 6 by 9 it actual it will be uh, approximately equal to 6 by 12 visual acuity uh, and obviously there will be cosmetic problems as well due to the thicker use of lenses and the eyes they will be appear magnified behind the spectacles as well okay so roving rings scotoma uh, so uh, the edge of the convex lens a high powered convex lens it will act as a prism and as we know when the light it falls on the prism it uh, bends towards the base of the prism so if we see the lines which are falling centrally on the lens they are being focused onto the retina but those which are uh, falling at an angle alpha towards the periphery of the lens they do not enter the pupil and they are not forming the image so uh, the edge of the lens it is present all around the lens like a ring so it is giving the rise to a ring shaped scotoma and there will be a central uh, the central vision will be normal and magnified and the periphery of the lens will be ex exerting a ring shaped scotoma and as the position of the scotoma it is not fixed in the visual field it will move with the movement of the eyeball it is known as a roving ring scotoma and in uh, relation to that we have a phenomena known as the jack in the box appearance now uh, suppose we have an object uh, which appears in the periphery of the patient's visual field it will appear blurred now here the lens Uh, the rays of light which are uh, passing through the pupil they are falling on the retina and the black uh, rays of light they are denoting the object uh, and it will appear blurred because the light is passing from the side of the spectacle frame now in order to view the object the person turns his head but now the object it, he, it is lying in the field of that ring scotoma and that object disappears for the patient now when he turns his head further more now the object it lies into the central field of the patient and it reappears this sudden reappearance uh, and the reappearance of the object is known as the jack in the box appear uh, phenomena and it is commonly seen in patients uh, of aphasia which have been corrected by the use of spectacles okay the spectacle correction of a unilateral aphasic eye uh, so um, it will uh, uh, when uh, there is unilateral aphasia and it has been corrected by spectacles it will achieve a clear retinal image but there will be relative spectacle magnification of 1.33 as discussed previously and the image size is one third larger than the normal fellow eye so uh, we will say that an isochronia is occurring which is the difference in the image size perceived between the eyes it can be from unequal magnification due to anisometropia or some retinal pathology so the patient is unable to the fuse fuse the image of the unequal uh, size and complains of diplopia normally a magnification of uh, 7% uh, can be tolerated and fusion of the vision can occur but if it is greater than that then the fusion will not occur and the patient will be complaining of diplopia so as the correction of with spectacles is having a number of optical problems so what are the other methods which can be used if it can can be corrected by the use of contact lenses which have an rsm of 1.1 and um, it can be corrected by the use of intraocular lenses and uh, that has the same retinal image size as that of an emetropic eye or it can be corrected using the refractive corneal surgery and all of these will be discussed in the next presentation this has been prepared from the clinical optics by l kington and the american academy of ophthalmology thank you Thank you. Good.